Greetings, faithful viewer. You should know, as your favorite can of trash, I am admittedly very impressionable. Which is why I filled this 8th grade science fair volcano with 100% real lava that will slowly reach me and then light me on fire so that I can become Aiden Christensen. But, in the meantime, let's go back to the peak of it all in 2005. With the release of the hotly anticipated Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. The chapter to end it all, where we'd finally learn how Anakin became a burnt McNugget. No more fighting, no more war, no more cheesy fan-made episode 3 posters. The wait leading up to the day of May 19th, 2005 was complete agony for me. And the marketing blitz we got definitely did not help. You see, it was no secret what was gonna go down in this movie for the most part, so pretty much every plot point got thrown out there in one form or another. We always knew there was gonna be lava, and Obi-Wan saying, You were the chosen one! was etched in my brain long before the movie was even out, but it didn't matter. We were still gonna go wild to see it all finally go down. I mean, if you really wanted that forbidden sweet knowledge of what happens in Episode 3, you definitely had options. Of course, there was the video game tie-ins we were getting, like the first Lego Star Wars, which ran through the entire plot of Revenge of the Sith weeks before the movie. As a young piss boy, you had a real dilemma here. Do you spoil yourself and experience the whole story in this Lego form anyway, or do you wait an agonizing couple weeks to see it all go down on the big screen? And even as a kid, I told myself patience. Patience. But god damn it, I'd be lying if I said that episode 3 door in Lego Star Wars wasn't a cruel temptress calling for me. Maybe when no one's looking, I can just sneak one peek. Play with Play us, us Junko. Don't you want to know what happens? Mm, let go. Learn what happens, you will. Age is 99. Just one piece. No. So, like any good virgin, I waited. And even two weeks before the movie, we got Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, the official game. A PS2 and Xbox title that completely turns Episode 3 into this combo-heavy action game that also throws in a glorious 12 whopping minutes of compressed flea market quality footage from the film. Do you know how much Journal of the Will's Power it took me to not immediately play through this shit? And finally the movie came out with me rushing along with so many others to go see it, and only then did I finally decide it was okay to give this game a shot. In a time where Star Wars games were arguably really hitting their peak for a movie tie-in, Revenge of the Sith really didn't disappoint. I played it a few times over the years and was kind of surprised to go back and find that a lot of these initial review scores were so middling and some even pretty negative. Like, really? See, if we rewind a bit to the beginning of the prequel trilogy, Phantom Menace was the first Star Wars movie to get a coinciding video game tie-in release and that got pretty poodoo reviews. By the time Attack of the Clones came out, LucasArts pretty much decided, fuck it, we'll just release a bunch of games tied to the events of Episode 2, while the actual movie game got punished into being this booty-ass Game Boy Advance game. So when we got a full-blown console release for Revenge of the Sith that looked like it could actually be a ton of fun, it was a surprise to be sure. Here you'll be controlling Anakin and Obi-Wan as you slice your way through droids and clone troopers galore, re experiencing all the action-packed bits of Episode 3. And yes, the cutscenes here are jam-packed with enough he said the things to copyright strike this entire video. Be careful. Always on the move. Essentially, these levels are pretty linear with this fixed camera, and I remember at the time thinking it felt like a more adult version of LEGO Star Wars, but the gameplay itself is pretty combo heavy. Your fingers will be working, I'm talking skin off the bone. And with mocap and animations that seem to be lifted straight from the performances, when you do get a good chain going, it can really feel satisfying. But with your lightsaber, you'll also be able to do what every true Jedi dreams about. Slowly slicing through doors and panels. Star Wars. Then you have the Force, which in typical 3D Star Wars game fashion returns as a sweet, succulent, glowy blue outline around objects and enemies that you can select around the environment with the right analog stick. This is for things like Force Push, Lightsaber Throw, and oh yeah, even Lightning. <laughs> When it works, it's serviceable, but a lot of times in later areas as the level gets busier, the fixed camera really starts to interfere and make things feel more confined to the point where you can't even see what you're interacting with. It's not too big of a deal, but when you're in the middle of a boss fight and you're trying to throw a whole ass couch at General Grievous in a pinch, it can get frustrating when you can't tell what you're using the force on. Why, you Jedi scum? That was my favorite couch! With each successful combo comes more experience points which you can spend after each level for things like adding more powerful attacks and improving force power- <laughs> Wait a minute, hold the holocron here. Force heal? 
Then what the fuck do I need your crusty ass for? I'm coming to save you, Natalie! Speaking of which, Padme's role is pretty much non-existent. She is nowhere to be seen this entire game. Boga gets more screen time here. Of course, being that this is a video game tie-in, there are some differences with how things unfold. Like, you don't get the behead Dooku in a 4K live leak cam rip. Instead, you just quickly stab him in the chest. Like, come on, guys. Even Lego did it when y'all were too bound to pussy. Now, any good movie game at its best can make you feel like you're playing through some extended direct cut of a movie you really like, and this game really does capture that feeling. And with a large majority of the voice cast returning, seeing these scenes unfold can really feel like you're watching some volume 3 of the original Clone Wars series. In fact, I can totally see someone playing this first and then being disappointed when they finally watch the actual movie, because the way some of these events play out is pretty cool. Sure, it can undermine some of the emotional beats of the film, but come on, that's not why we're here. I remember the one that always stuck out to me was Anakin taking matters into his own hands and getting to fight Mace Windu in this boss battle. It's kinda neat to see Mace be able to process Anakin turning to the dark side for a bit after that initial shock. No, wait, wait, wait! No Disney Plus show? Damn! It's funny to remember there was a time between this game's release and Revenge of the Sith finally coming out on DVD where I'd only gotten to see the movie once, so playing these levels just kept making me second guess myself like, whoa, wait a minute. Did I, did I miss the part where there was a Hulk busting clone trooper somewhere? After you beat those initial battle over Coruscant levels, the game diverges much like the movie where Obi-Wan goes to Utapau and Anakin goes 0 to 66 real quick. From there, things start to really pick up and both characters get new moves, like Kenobi can now mind trick enemies to start fighting each other and Anakin gets Sith lightning. Now, as someone who owns an action figure of George Lucas's Jedi son, I think I know a thing or two about what I'm, t I'm talking about when I say these Order 66 levels are one of the biggest highlights of the game. You get to watch that bitch-ass librarian get stabbed, you get to fight a Jedi version of the Revenge of the Sith stunt coordinator, and you even get to kill Rey Skywalker a whole ten years before a character even existed. <gasps> Did you know gaming that this means that uh, Kathleen Kennedy is fired? Eventually you go on to these Mustafar levels where you get to face off against the most ultimate Star Wars boss fight yet. I know all you OG since 1977 been waiting for this shit. That's right, a Newt Gunray boss fight. And before that, yes, you do have to kill the rest of the Separatists and with that comes the most heartbreaking moment of the Star Wars saga. You have to kill Watt Tambor. No. I shouldn't. Do it. No! I won't! I did it. I saved Star Wars. Of course, we then arrived to the Anakin vs. Obi-Wan duel, and at, by now you should have most of your skills pretty much maxed out, and squaring off one to one here makes for this really fun boss fight. It's, it's perfect, it's not too hard, and there's just enough opportunities and phases to really show off everything you've learned throughout the game. Once you pull that off, that's when you reach the final level. The thing Revenge of the Sith the game is most remembered for today. I don't think I ever hear about this game without mention of the alternate ending. This time you control Anakin through Darth Vader's wettest dream, which dares to pose the bold question, what if the high ground did dick? Not only that, you kill Sidious and claim the Empire as your own. This was the talk of the town, you know what I'm saying? We went door to door telling people about it. It was such a cool what if scenario, so cool that it made me really wish this game got some alternate ending sequel. At this point, what if stories in Star Wars were such a fun fan topic, but it was also one that had just only barely started being officially explored. I feel like that spirit kind of eventually carried with what we later saw with the Force Unleashed DLCs. It showed that people really wanted this stuff. And it shows that a good movie game doesn't always have to stick to the script. Sometimes it's nice to get some twists like this thrown in. After you beat the main campaign, you do unlock these bonus levels to play through too, as Grievous and Yoda. And perhaps most memorable is getting to play a bombastic rendition of the Episode 4 Doom with every over-seriously Star Wars nerd's canonical nightmare. Darth Vader with the Sith Lightning. And not just that, they threw in some co-op levels in a 1v1 multiplayer mode complete with some neat alternate appearances. As a whole, Revenge of the Sith the game at the time was this perfect rental. Sure, it could be pretty repetitive, but you could have a blast playing through this retelling of Episode 3 in one weekend with a few extra surprises thrown in. At the time, that may have made for a disappointing full-price game, but for a direct movie tie-in title, this was a godsend.
maybe it was mostly the marketing for this game or how the campaign really just condenses and amplifies all the darkest and most brooding aspects of the movie, but I always got this MTV Presents Revenge of the Sith vibe from this game. And admittedly, most of that probably comes from the fact that MTV literally pulled the character models from this game for one of those video mod music videos of Take Me Out by Franz Ferdinand, which I actually did watch when it aired and I thought it was the hypest shit. But also a few of the commercials instead of using Star Wars music would play like this rock instrumental song. It felt like they were really capitalizing where they could that this was a game for teenagers about the darkest chapter of the Star Wars saga. There was a lot of 2005 Hot Topic My Midi Chlorian Romance vibes here. And we can do this the easy way, or we can do this the Gerard way. Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, the video game. Before you see the movie, live it. Now, of course, I do want to talk about the handheld versions of this game, which I did play a bit of. Sadly, as I've mentioned in the past, a PSP version of this game was announced before quietly being cancelled before release. And I can definitely see where translating these controls and all these combos and force powers would have proven pretty difficult for such new tech. But we did get a Game Boy Advance version, which takes the essence of that 3D combo heavy action game and it shrinks it down to this really stylistic and fun 2D beat em up. Honestly, I wouldn't bat an eye if someone told me this was their preferred version. The art style here is just super colorful and it really pops, and I was surprised to see how smooth these animations were for a GBA game. Now, we also did get a DS version, and with it being so new, at the time, I remember not really knowing what the DS's capabilities were. Would Revenge of the Sith look more like the console versions, or would it have been its own new thing? Well, the DS version is literally just the Game Boy Advance game, but with improved sound and some effects, I think. The only real standout difference here is that between some levels you do get these 3D Jedi Starfighter sections, which are pretty fun. They definitely do feel like a neat little proof of concept somebody pulled together to have some differences between the two handheld versions. Oh, also, if you maybe borrowed here and there or stole your dad's cell phone circa 2005 and maybe made a credit card purchase or two, you may have come across a Java game called Star Wars Episode 3 Who Spent All My Minutes. This little mobile version of Episode 3 is a really simple side scroller where you can force sprint through these levels so fast it will make that one scene in Phantom Menace wish it could wish its feelings away. And at the end of each stage is a little quick boss fight where you block until you can deliver a single death blow. It's pretty easy and mindless, just something you could play real quick while you're driving. You know, it's crazy to think that by the end of 2005, we already had so many different ways to play through the events of Revenge of the Sith. Most movies get one if they're what you can call lucky. I remember part of me when playing Revenge of the Sith the game for the first time was a little disappointed that it didn't open up with a level where you pilot a Jedi Starfighter, but did it really matter that much when just a few weeks before this, LEGO Star Wars had an entire level for that? And even later, Battlefront 2 had some great space battles covered. It was just this really exciting time considering this was supposed to be the last chapter in the Star Wars saga for all we knew, and we were getting so many ways to experience it beyond the movie. Yeah, I get these are just meant to be product tie-ins, but it really did feel like the celebration. Part of that comes from the love that these games felt like they were made with. And Revenge of the Sith, the game, may not even be anywhere close to the best Star Wars game released that year, but for a movie tie-in, this was really solid. So much so that I remember hoping that maybe we'd even get games of the original trilogy in Episode 1 and 2 with a similar style, but it's probably way too late for that. Just like it's too late for me now. This lava will certainly be reaching me in no time. Here we go. Ah, oh, dang it. The kid I bought it from duped me. It's just baking soda again. Well, I guess there's always next year. May the force be with you and be sure to watch Little Italy in theaters August 2018. Thanks for watching.